What up everybody, Alfie here, aka Random Black Guy, aka Chocolate Face No Makeup And yeah, you already know what I'm going to talk about Of course I'm going to talk about the last season of The Dark So let's do this If you don't know guys is my favorite show on Netflix or top three my favorite show on Netflix it's up there with Mindhunters and yeah so you know I love this show a lot yeah I've been ranting and raving about this show the last season came out last Friday it's eight episodes and I've been watching it now uh, two times <laughs> So every episode I see twice. So bear with me guys. This video is going to be a little bit long because I need to talk about a lot of stuff. And obviously this review is going to be spoiler filled. So bear with me. Hopefully you guys going to love it. And let's do it. First of all, I got to give a big kudos to the creator uh, Barambo Odar and Janetti Freize. She is the writer and Baram is the director. And to me, they are the perfect duo. They created something that is a masterpiece. This show is going to be up there with the greatest. Uh, with Breaking Bad, uh, with The Wire, and shows like that so to me i freaking love this show through and through and season three even though i love it it was also bittersweet <laughs> because i knew that these last eight episodes is the last one and we're never going to see another season of this show i knew that this season was going to be good but i was not expecting this season to be this great this season to me is mainly like Martha season, most screen time, and she gets the most story and development. And I thought it was good because the first season was Ulrich and Jonas season, and season two, and season two was Charlotte, and a little bit of Jonas season. But I felt it was mainly Claudia and Charlotte season. Sorry. So this season being Martha season, it was really, really good because I like Martha as a character. And I was like, okay, how are they going to take this next concept that is, you know, having two different worlds mashing well with the time loop. I can tell you like this, they, they did it great. The season starts obviously where season two ended, that Martha takes Jonas to the alternative world uh, where she's from and the alternative world is actually where season one uh, began in this world Jonas does not exist uh, in this world Jonas mom Hannah uh, is with Ulrich and she's pregnant while Ulrich is having an affair with Charlotte and that was kind of crazy to see that uh, it was like a, a what if scenario but it wasn't Bartos is hooked on the whole black hole theory and Martha is basically Jonas in this world she even has his jello jacket and she has the same bike as Jonas that was also pretty good to see I like that this alternative world was just it was the same as the world with Jonas but at the same time it was really different the crazy thing is that Jonas later in the episode meets an older lady that is revealed to be Martha uh, but her name's not Martha her name is Eva because in the end now we understand why the older version of Jonas is called Adam and why the older version of Martha is called Eva because they are the creator of this world I like the symbolism in this I thought it was really good and really great executed bear with me like I said this is in depth I'm going to talk all over so if you already see the season then you know what i'm talking about i'm just going to talk through and through uh, i'm probably going to hop between episodes but that's just because this has a lot of stuff to unravel so yeah let's do it okay and one of the twists we need to talk about in this season is that martha is pregnant with jonas baby 
baby. Jonas and Martha's baby is the bridge between the two different worlds. To go to one of my favorite episodes, to me it's episode 9. I think episode 9 was really good because we finally got to see Noah once again because Noah died in the second season. And I thought Noah was a compelling character. So it was kind of nice to see his backstory and see how he ended uh, as a character. Because in the end, he got tricked by Adam. And I liked it. I thought it was really good. And Claudia and Jonah's story was also really good. I think Claudia and Noah's story was the best one. Jonas, it felt a little bit repetitive, but it was still good. But Claudia, god damn, Claudia was also one of the standouts of this season. I don't want to swear, but fudge. <laughs> she was so goddamn compelling. The older one and the young one was really good because she lost her daughter, Regina. And to see how much she wants to save Regina and also have to do what she has to do to save the world, it was like, okay. Because Claudia, as a character, to me, Claudia started as a B-status character. But in season two, she got more screen time. And here, she was up there with the big ones. And I thought Claudia's story overall was like really compelling and really uh, complex. But in the end, it was for the best. And I, I thought it was really good. To me, episode 9 fills a lot of plot hole, And I thought it did it well. And I think they did a great job by giving arc and purpose and a great sound up to these characters. Uh, to me, even Bartos, that is my least favorite character, uh, his arc was compelling. So, great, great job with episode 9. That is my favorite once again. The crazy thing with season 3, why I really, really like it, is that it, to me, it adds to the layer that is already peeled like an onion, <laughs> but it's peeled well. Because in the end, we know that all of these layers is connected with each other. Yeah, in the future, the war between Adam and Ava uh, <laughs> is that Adam is trying to ruin the knot, uh, the tie that is between two worlds. And to me, I thought the storyline there is, was great because, once again, the knot is the baby. And in the end, it is Adam's and Ava's baby. And that big twist is that we get introduced to a character called the Wanderer and even though I thought the Wanderer was pretty so-so as a character, I'm going to talk more about him later, the twist is that Wanderer is the son of Jonas and Martha. Even though they don't say it, we know that. We see the Wanderer coming in to the room where Martha is and where the young Martha is and the adult Martha is and he hugs the young one, version of her and it was like, okay. That's confirmed. Obviously, the Wanderer is the child of Martha. You know, this show has a lot of plot twists, but I think that they executed good. To me, obviously, it was a little bit foreseen, but I liked it anyway, so good job with that. And another twist that was like, okay, I did not see that coming, is that Tannhaus is was <laughs> uh, responsible for creating these two different worlds and the reasoning why he did that was to save his son uh, yeah because his son uh, with his wife and child dies in a car accident I think 1986 so Tana House the only reason he got hooked to the whole time loop and world was that he could save his son and that twist was really good and really sad man and the last twist that I thought was good, not great, but still good, is that the love between Jonas and Martha is like a glitch to the Matrix, like Jonas says. If it wasn't for their love, the world would be much better. It shows how much love shapes people. So, great job with that. I still like it, man. In the end, the crazy thing with the whole world, you know, creating worlds, is that we still has the same world with the same scenario and same outcome for these people and that was also really like wow factor i enjoyed that because it shows that whatever you're trying to do is still going to end up the same way a lot of these people think that they've done this once 
no, they've done this thing a lot of times. And that was really good explained by Claudia. If this writing in here is not showing that it's, it's up there with the best, then you guys are blind. Like, golly, honestly, the cleverness in this show is going to get you hooked instantly. One thing I really appreciate with this season is that all of the plot holes I had issues with previous season, they sum it up real good in here. You know, even though it's better than others, I still think that they did a really great job with that. Like, to, to me, the biggest highlight is the story of Claudia from past to future. I thought it was good, while Katarina's story was maybe not the best, but it was still entertaining. I thought that with, with limited time, limited episode, they gave us everything we wanted. Like, freaking good job, man. Once again, this season, the direction is superb. I appreciate that they trying to do creative stuff and neat stuff this time. Uh, one example is the quick zoom out on every transition from scene to scene. Uh, even though it can be a little bit tiresome, I still appreciate it because it stands out from the other seasons. And even the color correction in here is perfected. Different times have different color schemes. That's a smart way to know where we are instead of having titles everywhere. And acting is believable from everybody. It really feels like everybody brought their A game here because they knew this is the last season. And even the music in here is great because the music adds to the intensity where it's most needed. One episode I did not like that much is episode 2. I think episode 2 is a filler episode and it is, it is pretty slow. Even though some stuff got revealed, it was like, mm, it just, it was really, really slow. So yeah, if I have to talk about something that I thought was really bad with this season, is that the Wanderer as the character, we, first of all, we saw him a little bit uh, in the last season. I think that he, he's, he wasn't compelling. There wasn't that interesting as a character. And I think that to me, the problem is that they came a little bit too late to, to a story that was already complex. That is the biggest reason why I think that Dark needed another season. Dark season three to me, it, it was really, really good. I think it's better than season two. I enjoyed this show overall. And like I said, it, it kind of sucked that this was the last season, but I still freaking love it. And I think you guys really need to see it. And this going to be up there with the cult classics. Yeah, with a sad face, I just want to say thank you for giving us Netflix a great show, a great foreign show. <sighs> okay, obviously you already know what my rating is going to be, but I have to do it anyway. My rating for Dark Season 3, the last season, I give it a 5 out of freaking 5. <laughs> Like I said, top three best shows on Netflix. This was a great ending to a great show. Anyways, guys, what do you think about Dark season three? Or what do you think about Dark overall? Do you think it's one of the best shows on Netflix? Do you think it's really good? Do you think it's overhyped? Write your comments down below and let me know. And don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And don't forget to click on the notification bell. So every time I upload a new video, you'll be the first to see it. My name is Alfie, aka Random Black Guy, aka Chocolate Face No Makeup, with a long ass review or in depth review for the last season of Dark. Ah, ich bin gut. Ich liebe Dark. Dark is good. Yeah, liebe ich gut. Oh my god. So, yeah, that was my German. My name is Alfie, aka Random Black Guy, aka Chocolate Face No Makeup. Until next time, guys, I'm giving you out there. Peace, 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 peace. Random black guy